Welcome and thank you to everyone for um, being here today. Important day for our club. The most important decision that we can possibly take. On behalf of the Adelaide United Football Club, we are pleased to officially announce Carl Veert has been appointed as our head coach on a permanent basis and he has signed a two-year deal. I open the floor to questions. Carl, uh, I was lucky enough to be here in 2003 when you got the first goal for United. Um, would you like to reflect on that moment and where you are now? Do you think it happened? <laughs> Look, at, um, coming towards the end of my um, playing career, I always wanted to go into coaching. Um, and I think, you know, I did my first coaching licence in 2001. So I've, I was planning for that, but, um, you know, now to be sitting here in, as the head coach of Adelaide United, it's, um, yeah, I have to pinch myself a little bit. It's uh, very proud. Um, you know, the club means a lot to me. Um, and as you said, that first night, walking out to the stadium, um, the game was delayed so because there were so many people wanting to get into the game. Um, that's one of my you know, highlights through my playing career was that night and scoring the first goal. Um, the atmosphere that night was, was electric. Our supporters that night were in that whole first year were fantastic. And you know, I'd love now under my um, leadership to, to get that feeling back in the club and get that support back. Yeah, you're from Wales, and it's got its own proud soccer tradition. Um, how do you think you need to go down there today? Um, yeah, they'll be very proud. Um, you know, uh, I grew up there, lived there for 18 years. That's where I learned all my football. Um, so it means a lot to me. You know, the people there that gave me my opportunities to play, the community there played a, a huge thing in my development as a footballer. They helped me reach my dreams, you know, they helped me um, come to Adelaide and play, play football, they supported me, so um, they played a big part in this. How, how beneficial is it that you know what you're walking into, having been an assistant here for the day? Um, yeah, it's just not that, I know the club, I know the supporters, I know the town, um, you know, I know how much um, South Australians um, support their teams, um, and it's something that being a, a fellow South Australian, how how much pride we take in all of our sporting teams. And, you know, it's, that's a big thing for me now is to make sure the club gives back to the community and try and get back that feeling that we had at the beginning of Adelaide United when it first started. And what, how do you assess the list and the club at the moment? Um, yeah, look, I, I think um, the season that just went past, I suppose we underperformed a little bit. We should have made the finals and that was our goal, to make the finals. And... And we definitely had a team that was capable of making the, the finals, and they showed that in the last five games. Um, we've got some a really good crop of young players coming through, and that's part of my mantra is to, to help developing those players and, and get them to reach their goals. They've all got goals to go on and play at a higher level and play overseas, and as a club, that's what we're here to try and help our young players to reach their goals. When you took over at the end of last season, it was about bringing the fun back and you could see how much the players enjoyed that. How much of that is going to be an element to continue with and, and you plan on building upon that and, and implementing a lot more in a longer term? Yeah, most definitely. You know, you know, we all play the game because we love the game and if we're not enjoying the game, we're not going to perform at the level that we can. Um, so I'm still, you know, I'm a little bit old school where um, football is concerned, you know make sure the players are enjoying it, make sure that they're working hard and the results will, will come. You mentioned briefly about your mantra or your brief as the new head coach. We know sometimes international coaches want to win trophies straight away, that's their job. Where's the balance for you between winning and, and producing players? Um, it goes hand in hand. Um, you know, winning mentality is, is a huge positive that you need to have. Um, it was something that I, I suppose... I might have had a bit, little, pushed it a little bit too far when I was a player. Um, but if you don't have that mentality that you want to win every game and, and win the league and win every trophy, then you're in the wrong club because that's what we want. And we have to find that balance, and I have to find that balance of developing the players. But the first thing they need to have is they want to win. How much confidence did you personally take from those last five games of the season? Um, yeah, look, going in, I, you know, I'll say that I was a little bit unsure on whether I could get the results. Um, but I, 
as each game went on, I, I grew in confidence and had the belief in myself that, yeah, I've, I can do this. And I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on the team and, and pushing forward for the next couple of years. And Bruce, is it those last five games that really cemented his position as the next manager? Yeah, certainly. I think the team performed exceptionally well. Um, we all were hoping Carl would be our guy but we started to run through the, the proper process and, and Carl was across it the, the whole way through before we started interviews or, or anything like that. Um, we made Carl aware, but he did so exceptionally and the team performed so exceptionally in very difficult circumstances. You know, Carl didn't go into an environment that was fantastic. You know, we're coming off a, a losing streak, you know, COVID had hit, you know, players had been impacted adversely and, and Carl was able to turn that around exceptionally quickly. And, even the feedback I was getting from all the players was just how fantastic it was to have to have Carl as, as the head coach. So then you couple that with the results and, and in the, at the end of the day, it made our job much easier to choose our next head coach. Chris, now that you've got a bit of time to shape your own team, are you looking at targeting any players during the off-season? Um, look, um, we've got a, a majority of our squad already signed and there's a, a few spaces that we need to... To look at, and over the next you know few weeks, we will sit down with Bruce and go through the team that we've got and where we need to improve. Um, but um, yeah, we're always looking to improve the team. Just on that, how disappointed were you that Taras has now left, given you gave him his opportunity? Oh yeah, look, um, disappointed that, but um, I wish him all the best. You know, all, that's what we want is our players, young players, to come through and play. And you know he believes he um, wants to move on. So, you know, I wish him all the best. I had a good chat with Taras and, you know, hopefully things work out for him on wherever he's heading to. Where's Michael Jacobson at at the moment? Is he going to be in the side? Um, yeah, that's something that we need to discuss. Um, you know, Jakob had a fantastic season last year. He led the club very well and, you know, I've got a very good relationship with, with Michael and if we can sort things out, I'm, I'd be more than happy to have him stay at the club. Bruce, sorry, just to summarise the whole squad, how many players are signed at the moment and how many spots do you have available? 19 players signed. Um, a number of spots available and, and, and definitely a few we have to fill. But like Carl said, that's probably a discussion for another day. Bruce, uh, obviously you're at a professional level, but uh, how much... Look, yeah, ultimately we want the best person for the job. So Carl's not sitting next to me because he's a South Australian. He's sitting next to me because he's the best possible head coach that, that Adelaide United could, could have. Um, the added benefit, you know, the nice to have, the cherry on top, however you want to put it, is that he is South Australian. He does understand the landscape. He's very well respected. I, I've, I've never met anyone in this town that, that's spoken a negative word about Carl and and haven't been in Adelaide for a, a significant amount of time, that's exceptionally rare. There's, there's always someone who's got a bugbear with someone else. But it just, it just speaks to the level of, of the character that we're dealing with. So the fact that, that Carly South Australian, I know the people of, of Wyala will be exceptionally proud of him because uh, they stop me in the street every now and then, very rarely, and they say, you know, give Carl the job. But um, look, the, the fact is South Australian is the cherry on top, really. It does break a trend of international coaches for the club. For me, it was paramount. Um, I think unless you're getting a foreign coach, that's going to completely revolutionise the way you want to do things as a club because you're at some sort of inflection point and you need a new identity, which we weren't at. Um, then a foreigner can be justified. But I think with the depth of talent of Australian coaches at the moment, um, you know, they've been doing their licences for a number of years now. The sophistication's been growing for a number of years. I think that, you know... It's a perfect time to have Australian coaches and there's more than enough good Australian coaches um, to fill A-League squads. I don't think there's a particular need for, for foreign coaches, certainly not for our club at this point in time. Charles, look over at the end of last season, some people who don't know you might have said, oh, I didn't see him as a head coach. Now you've got this role, what's your long-term ambitions? Do you eventually one day want to coach overseas, you want to coach a national team? What's your, what's your, your long-term plan? My long-term plan is to stay here and get the club very successful. Um, um, you know, I've only signed a two-year deal, but I plan to be here a lot longer than that and build this club to be the best club in the, in the country. What's the case with 
Um, yeah, look, we'll start training in October. Um, at this stage, we're still a little bit unsure when the, the new season will start, but we're planning to start in October, and we'll see where it hap- what develops from there. Um, Bruce, just one more. I was rather afraid. Has the club received much interest in him, and how confident are you keeping him in that season? There's been significant interest in, in Riley, if, if, if I'm honest. Um, we're confident of keeping him, but also we're not... You know, chaining him to the fence and, 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 and forcing him to stay here. Um, if there's a deal to be struck and, and Riley can head overseas, uh, I'd be more than happy. I, I'd be thrilled for, for him to do that. Um, if a deal's not struck and, and then he stays as, as our player. I remember the day I was sitting here with Riley and we signed him. I said, he's on a three-year deal and I don't want to see him here in three years. So the idea is for him to go overseas um, whether we get a, a reasonable offer for him or not, all those sort of moving parts um, have not aligned to date, but there's significant interest in the player. And James Choice's knee injury will he be good to go for pre-season when he's eventually start? Yeah, that's my understanding. My understanding is the rehabilitation's gone well, and come October he should be uh, ready to join the team. And for reversing the vote for Riley? Exactly. Exactly the same boat. I think there's a significant amount of players that will be in that boat this season and the season's gone forward simply on the back of the strategy we're going as a club. Good, talented, young players getting game time at the club. That's always naturally going to get interest. They're going to garner interest from, from overseas and, and you know we welcome that and we expect that. So they're on the same boat and if there's deals to be done, they'll be done. If not... They're willing and able to stay here and play for Adelaide United. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, gentlemen.